I'm starting a new series on using Sibelius. This is designed for people who have never used it or who have limited experience with it. When you first load up Sibelius, you'll probably hear some music playing in the background. That's from one of Jean Sibelius' symphonies. And you'll be presented with this quick start. Maybe on this page, this page, the recent lists if you've used it before, importing from the Sibelius Avid blog, you get some news. I like to leave it on new score, and every time you load Sibelius, this will come back up. And for now, we'll just start with the treble staff. You'll notice there's a bunch of templates in here. Some of these I've created, but most of these come with Sibelius. For now, I'll just try the treble staff. If I want to add instruments, I can come over here and choose from the long list of available instruments. And there are even more in this pop down menu. Or you just cl click on what you want, add, add the score, and it's there. And it'll show up in here. I recommend taking advantage of this page over here now rather than later. So set your time signature, especially if you have a pickup or an upbeat bar in complete measure. Select it now, not later. Tempo text, you can choose from a pull down menu or you can type in your own. We'll do that just for fun. You can put a metronome mark and then you can choose your key. You have major and minor flat and sharps. No key signature will be where you find C major or A minor. And if you want to, you can go ahead and put in your title. If you want to create a title page, you can do that now. And you can put in more information if you want. And then when you've got everything you want, type create. And there is a start. Before we do anything, I want to go over here. This is what they call the ribbon. As if you came from an old version, or if you've seen an old version of Sibelius, you know what this is. It's totally different. Um, a lot of people didn't like it when they changed, but that's another story. You have all these options up here, which replace the menus. They're called tabs. But click on the file one. I want to go down to preferences and take a look at a couple of things in here. I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. Remember I mentioned you probably heard some music when Sibelius loaded up? But right here, this little checkbox, you can tell it not to play that music. I turn mine off. I like millimeters for rulers and other things, but you can choose spacing, whatever you want there. Textures. You'll notice in the background here I have a bluish texture. I believe Sibelius 7, the default is a purplish color. I've changed it to this, so you can change it to whatever you might want. We'll talk about step time later. In score position, I like to these options here tell you what is focused and what you see on the screen when you're entering notes. If you don't tell it to, to follow the note input, the, you can start entering notes and it's not on the screen at all. So there's various options you can play around with. There's not a right or wrong. Customize it however you want. In playback, so you get some sounds. You have a choice. I'm going to have a lot more than you have. But you can choose different sounds and options in here. If you find your playback is doing something weird, come in here and, and check this menu out. I would recommend making a note, probably in a text file, or put it somewhere on your computer where you won't lose it of what you've changed in case you run into problems. Uh, one tip, if you're using a piano for instance, click this box so that you're only using one instance of a piano or an organ. And if you've got multiple instruments like two or three flute lines, you want to use a variant sound so you get a little more realistic sound to what you're doing. MIDI messages that will depend on whether you're using hardware or not. If you have an external hardware uh, keyboard like I do, you might want, you might need some of these on, you might not need some of these on. Uh, if you find your playback is doing weird things, turn off the reverb. 
when you're doing note input. Some people are accustomed to using pitch before duration or duration after pitch. You can specify this in here. And if you came from Finale, you might be used to having the quarter note being the five on the keypad. That's this thing over here in the bottom right. R4. I came from Finale. It was a tough adjustment, but using the default Sibelius, I find works just fine. If you find that your system is a little sluggish, you can turn this off as well, or if you just find it annoying, you can tell it to put the notes, not to play the notes when you enter notes or edit things. I just left it on. Don't need to worry about music fonts or the mouse. Keyboard shortcuts. I've, you can create your own feature set, and there's also preset ones in here. If you ever get confused, the standard menus is the one you want to load up, but you can create your own. For example, in the file tab, which we were in, if I want to exit, I can use alternate 4 or control F Q. If you're constantly going to the score info page, for example, you can add a shortcut. And if you're not sure what shortcut key, I just picked one at random. And it says, whoops, it's already being used for something else. So I can either override it, because do I ever use go to page? Yeah, not sure if I ever do. So I might want to override it. I won't for now, but you can just find a keyboard shortcut and again keep a record of these in a file somewhere on your system so you know what they are. I've created a few and forgotten about them. I'm like, what did I do? So you can go back to that. Most of you will have some sort of input device, either a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI or an iPad or Android tablet with using Touch OSC. What you want to do, I can turn my keyboard on here, and when you press a key on the keyboard, see how the little green light, this section here where it says test, I'm playing, you're not going to hear it because I don't have it turned audio into the video that I'm recording, but as I'm playing keys on the keyboard, it's lighting up, so it tells me everything's working just fine. If that doesn't light up, then you need to exit Sibelius and figure out what's wrong with your installation of your MIDI driver because it's not a Sibelius issue. And down here there's several options you can use for when you're doing MIDI. You can try different ones of these if you find that your MIDI input is doing oddball things. In your files options, I like to zoom at 100% view. That's not viewing the whole page, which is down in here, but it's at what they consider to be 100% view. There's several options for viewing pages. You can see them here and you can play around with these to figure out which ones you like. I like to start with everything maximized rather than at page width or, or whatever options you care to. One, two things. Save your scores. Figure out where you want to put your scores. I believe this is the default documents and scores, but you can set it to anything you want. And important, turn this on. Auto save every, I use 10 minutes, I probably should change it to 3 minutes. But in case the power goes out, the computer, if it crashes, you have another program running in the background that crashes your system, or rarely Sibelius will crash, you won't lose everything. You can at least go back to those backups. And lastly, you have some options here in the display tab here. You can show all bar show bar numbers on all stabs if you want. You can set your um, different options, and you can set it. You can go into the view tab, which we'll talk about later. Set up everything you want, and then click on this, and it'll set your custom view options to be what you set there. Okay, that's a brief overview. First things I would do to get started, go back and watch it again if I went too fast. I don't want to make these videos too long.